February 25th, St. Walburga. St. Walburga was born in Devonshire around the year 710. She was the daughter of St. Richard, one of the underkings of the West Saxons, and of Winna, sister of St. Boniface, apostle of Germany. She had two brothers, St. Willibald and St. Winibald. St. Richard, when starting with his two sons on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, entrusted Walburga, then eleven years old, to the abbess of Wimborne. In that school, and as a member of that community, she spent 26 years preparing for the great work she was to accomplish in Germany. The monastery was famous for holiness and austere discipline. There was a high standard there, and the child was trained in solid learning and in accomplishments suitable to her rank. Thanks to this, she was later able to write St. Willibald's life and an account in Latin of St. Willibald's travels in Palestine. She is thus looked upon by many as the first female author of England and Germany. Scarcely a year after her arrival, Walburga received tidings of her father's death. During this period, St. Boniface was laying the foundations of the church in Germany. He saw that for the most part scattered efforts would be futile, or would exert but a passing influence. He therefore determined to bring the whole country under an organized system. Boniface was the first missionary to call women to his aid in this effort. In 748, in response to his appeal, Abbas Teda sent over to Germany St. Lioba and St. Willibald, among other nuns. They sailed with fair weather, but a long and terrible storm arose. Hereupon, Walburga prayed, kneeling on the deck, and at once the sea became calm. On landing, the sailors proclaimed the miracle they had witnessed, so that Walburga was everywhere received with joy and veneration. This is why she is invoked against storms, for sailors, and for watermen. She was welcomed by her uncle, St. Boniface, and by her brother, St. Willibald. After living some time under the rule of St. Lioba, she was appointed abbess of Heidenheim, and was thus placed near her favorite brother, St. Winibald, who governed the abbey there. After his death, she ruled over the monk's monastery as well as her own. Her virtue, sweetness, and prudence, added to the gifts of grace and nature which she was endowed, as well as the many miracles she wrought, endeared her to all. On September 23rd in the year 776, she assisted at the translation of her brother St. Winibald's body by St. Willibald, when it was found that time had left no trace upon the sacred remains. Shortly after this, she fell ill, and, Having been assisted in her last moments by her brother St. Willibald, she expired in Heidenheim on the 25th of February in the year 777. St. Willibald laid her to rest beside St. Winibald, and many wonders were wrought at both tombs. St. Willibald survived until the year 786, and after his death, devotion to St. Walburga gradually declined, and her tomb was neglected. About the year 870, the bishop determined to restore the church and monastery, which were falling into ruin. The workmen, however, desecrated St. Walburga's grave, and one night she appeared to the bishop reproaching and threatening him. This led to the solemn translation of the remains to Eichstadt on the 21st of September. They were placed in the Church of the Holy Cross, now called St. Walburga's. In 893, the bishop opened a shrine to take out a portion of the relics of the saint, and it was then that the body was was first discovered to be immersed in a precious oil which from that day to this has continued to flow from the sacred remains. This fact has caused St. Walburga to be reckoned among the oil-yielding saints. Portions of St. Walburga's relics have been taken to Cologne, Antwerp, and many other places, whilst her oil has been carried to all quarters of the globe. There are many cures associated to this oil, which, together with her healing skills in life, explains her patronage of plague, rabies, cough, and other illnesses. A soul without discipline is like a ship without a helm. She must inevitably strike unawares upon the rocks, founder on the shoals, or float unknowingly into the harbor of the enemy. Let us ask St. Walburga to help us in our daily struggles with self-discipline so that we may master ourselves and gain heaven.